Hello YouTube and welcome to another video. Um, in this video, I will be doing the impossible perfect day challenge in Cook Serve Delicious. And since the challenge itself is pretty straightforward, I'm going to talk about some strategies that I use to make this a little bit easier and to make the impossible possible, basically. So first off, I'd like to talk about menu item choice. I played the Impossible Perfect Day with the following f six items on my menu. Steak, chicken, fish, burgers, coffee, and salad. And the reason why I chose these items was twofold. I wanted to pick foods with a long cooking time. Foods with a long cooking time sit in your prep stations for longer and they prevent new foods from coming in. So it reduces the amount of time you need to be managing be managing new foods. And then I also picked salad and coffee because they have a short prep time. Even though they don't have a long cooking time, I felt like for me this was a good balance between um, waiting around and like actively prepping foods. And I had practiced coffee and salad a lot in my original playthrough, so I felt really confident in doing those two foods. Another thing that I did was I didn't upgrade my foods too much. I don't think this was um, essential, but for example, steak gets more complicated when you upgrade it, and I didn't upgrade steak at all. And another thing that I did to prepare was I bought all of the patience and chore upgrades that were available. Since in an extreme difficulty mode, you start off with a lot more money. This is definitely doable. You can just buy all the upgrades when they become available. Another important thing to consider in the Impossible Perfect Day is your buzz. So what I did to sort of manage buzz, basically the higher your buzz, the more incoming the more incoming customers there will be. So to manage my buzz, I kept two menu items on my menu that had menu rot. So normally menu rot is bad because it reduces your buzz, like you kind of want to take those items off and switch them out, but for this particular challenge I left them on because I think two menu items with menu rot gives you a minus 10% buzz and it helped me sort of manage my buzz more. Also to manage my buzz, I tried to not generate any more buzz during the day by completing any of the thumbs up chores. You'll see that I think I accidentally did it once anyways, but most of the time when the thumbs up request comes in, I actually just ignore it and let it time out. Uh, finally, another the last strategy that I used is I repeated day 18 over and over again, and as soon as I made one mistake, I just escape and quit the day. And not only did this save me a lot of time, like once I made a mistake, I didn't have to waste time playing through the rest of the day. Um, it also kept like what I wanted was to complete this challenge while my restaurant was still a one star restaurant. And that's because when you get up to a two-star restaurant, you have one, one or two more prep slots. And with seven or eight prep stations, it's just like a lot more to manage and it's easier to mess up. So yeah, um, even though the Impossible Perfect Day may seem really hard, I think it's totally within reach for everybody. I'm not that great at this game, but by managing managing your strategy, you can make it harder or easier depending on how you like to play. And you know, that's one thing I really like about this game. You can kind of manage the difficulty on your own. If you want the game to be really hard, then you can pick menu items like soup or kebabs. Like I'm terrible at kebabs. Um, you can pick those harder items and put them on your menu. So yeah, like maybe I'll try this again without as many of those like little hacks. Uh, one thing that you'll notice is when I started playing the game, I actually rebound a lot of the keys. I rarely ever reach over to the arrow keys because I rebound almost everything that uses the arrow keys to something on the home row. That's so I can avoid moving my hands around too much. The exception is for washing dishes. For some reason, I just like never rebound the keys for washing dishes and I got used to it and just kept playing that way. It's 
it wasn't a big deal to me, but I should probably rebind those. I also um, chose the mode where you use space to serve instead of enter. And I think that's slightly easier on your fingers because enter you press with your pinky and my pinky finger is pretty weak and so to have like the most frequent key that you have to press be your pinky, it it leads to a lot of hand fatigue so I just chose to switch over to the space bar to serve. Oh. <laughs> so those are my thoughts on doing the impossible perfect day. Overall, uh, I think it took me 10 tries to do it. 10 tries on day 18. So yeah, not impossible at all. I really enjoy Cook, Serve, Delicious overall. I think it's a great game. And right now it's actually on sale for the Steam Summer Sale. So I highly recommend if you haven't gotten it already. It's a pretty old game now that you pick it up. I bought it at full price at $10. And right now it's on sale for $2.50, which is a complete steal. Like, definitely get it. And I guess when I get tired of this, the developer is also working on Cook, Serve, Delicious 2, which has like a ton more menu items, new mechanics. It looks really great, so looking forward to that as well. I hope you enjoyed my tips and tricks, and I hope they help you achieve your impossible perfect day if you haven't gotten it already. We're coming up on the end of mine. A couple more items left. At one point, I think it's coming up, I just take my hands off the keyboard <laughs> because I'm so relieved. Yep. Thank you so much for watching and hope you have a great day.